Hi everybody, this is Dr. Melody with Fit Plus Faith. Super happy to be here with you this morning as we head into day three of a new devotion that we started called Faith, Fitness, and Food by Day Spring Publishing. So we are just, man, already getting off to such a good start. So hello and welcome to you who is joining me here live. Let me go ahead and say, hey Jordan, what's up? Good morning. Great to see you here. And um, so yeah, we, have, we just started this new devotion on Monday for those of you that haven't yet been able to see it or join in and it has been truly, truly wonderful already. Yesterday we were talking about procrastination. So that's a really big one. And uh, one of our action steps, our focus steps for the day was to find something that you were putting off to later and do it today. Like really just getting past procrastination and not allowing that to be one more step that's stopping you. So um, I would love to hear from you what it is that maybe you had done or what are the things that you normally procrastinate on. Hey Jordan, you said your sisters are joining in today. That's awesome. Hello and welcome to Jordan's sisters. Love to see you guys here. Would love to have you comment below as you're hopping on. Hey, Laura, good morning. As you're hopping on ladies, I would really love for you to think if there's anyone that you know, just like Jordan with her sisters, if there's anyone that you know that would love to join us on this devotion series, go ahead and tag them below or hit the share or invite buttons and invite your friends in, share this out and let's really continue to uh, increase how many women we are helping and serving through this amazing devotion. So I'm glad that your sisters are here with us this morning. And uh, hey, uh, okay, let's see, who else do I have? Uh, as you're hopping on, ladies, go ahead and say hi. Comment down below so I know who's here. Jenny, good morning, great to see you here. And ladies, uh, I'd love to know where you're coming in from because I don't always know where everyone is yet until I get to know you further. So let me know where you're coming in from. I know that Laura is coming in from Southern California. Jordan, I just don't exactly remember if it's Wyoming. I don't know why that's sticking out to me. So let me know where you're coming in from. And uh, today's topic, we're going to be talking about day three, don't go on a diet. Okay. We're talking about lifestyle changes instead. And so day three is titled don't go on a diet. Hey, Jaylene, good morning. Great to see you. And so, yeah, I would love to know Jaylene where you're coming in from too. Iowa. Jenny says Iowa. I love it. All right. That's wonderful. I'm coming to you from California as well. I am going to be back to San Diego next weekend or actually this coming weekend. I can't believe it. Yep. Jordan from uh, Wyoming, Jaylene from Minnesota. Holy moly. This is awesome. I'm loving seeing where everybody is from. So yesterday in our devotion, we were talking about procrastination and pick one thing that you're procrastinating against and go and do it. Did anybody do that yesterday? Did anybody besides me do that yesterday? And if you did, what did you do? I shared in our Facebook group, if you're not yet part of the Healthy Christian Women Facebook group, then come join us in there and you'll see that uh, linked up at the top of the Fit Plus Faith page. But I shared in our group yesterday that for me, the procrastination was in exercising. I had really just been putting it off and knowing that I need to do it, knowing that I feel better when I do it, but sometimes it's just so difficult for me to get my butt out the door and actually exercise. And so I did that yesterday and felt really good about it. So that was my procrastination thing that I didn't wanna do, but I knew it was gonna be good and I just got out there and did it. So I'd love to hear if anyone else had anything from yesterday that you did or maybe it still applies to you today. What is one thing that you are procrastinating against doing, but you know it's going to be good for you and good for your health? What is that? And will you make a commitment this morning and share with us below, will you make a commitment this morning to go and do that thing? And let us know once you're done, let us know what you did. would love to know what that is for you. So for me, it was definitely exercise yesterday. So I felt good about that. All right, well, as we get started this morning, as other ladies are still hopping on and joining us, then I'm gonna go ahead and pray for us and then we will jump in, all right? Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for uh, just these women all over the country that are gathering together this morning. Thank you for bringing us to this new devotion through one of our sisters, Jenny in Alaska, who shared this with me and it is already just such a wonderful journey and we have so much more amazing things ahead of us as we go through this devotion together. I thank you for this community of women that is gathering together that is, is just growing and blossoming and it's so beautiful to see what you're doing 
in each of our lives individually on our health journey. Thank you so much, God, that through our health journey, through our desire to get healthy with our body or to make changes in our body, that you bring up spiritual issues that we can continue to grow closer to you and learn more about you through our health journey. It's so amazing how interconnected you have created us. And we just love you for that. And we thank you for that. We thank you that you're so patient and loving and kind and that you're always there to, uh, whenever we call on you, you're just ready. You're ready to move on our behalf and to speak to our hearts. We ask Holy Spirit that you speak to our hearts this morning in what you have for us in this devotion this morning. We ask all these things in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. Jordan says, I failed yesterday because we were relaxing from our long days in the mountains, but today is the day. Right after the devotion, you're going on a run. Sounds good. Well, you know, sometimes we need a day of rest and that is all right. You had a really busy weekend in the mountains, lots of hiking and moving around, and sometimes we just need to rest and we need to be okay with that and have guilt-free rest, you know? And so don't even worry about that. Uh, but I love that you've given your body some rest and now it's time to get up and get going. So that is just wonderful. All right, so let's dive into day three. If you don't yet have the book, let me link it for you real quick. You don't have to have the book in order to join us on any of these devotions, but if you want the book, then let me go ahead and link that for you and you can just get it through Amazon. Get the book. There we go. And, uh, and then you can join us along and that's awesome, but it's not mandatory, all right? so. Here we go, don't go on a diet. The verse for today is Proverbs 25, 16. Do you like honey? That's just an easy question, yes. Do you like honey? Don't eat too much of it or it will make you sick. That's from uh, the New Living Translation. I, I've learned that verse um, in slightly different translation, but, but the premise is still the same. And I love how practical God's word is in guiding us in different areas, even related to our health. It says too much honey will actually, I think that the translation I ended up first learning was too much honey is sweet to the taste, but too much of it will make you vomit. <laughs> I think that's like, maybe that's the NIV version, but that's basically true, right? Do you like honey? It's sweet to the taste, but if we overindulge in those certain things, they're actually not good for us. It's too much of a good thing it's actually true. There can be too much of a good thing. So we do have to be careful what we feed ourselves because too much of things like that, that have too much sugar in them or different things, they make you want to vomit, right? They're going to upset you. And like it says here, it will make you sick. Jordan says this cracks me up because, because of what I said the other day, way too much eating honey. That's so funny. Exactly. That's really funny. So so there we go. If you want to lose weight, please don't go on a diet is how it starts. The title here is don't go on a diet. Why? The answer simply put is that most diets don't work. In fact, one study examined the results of popular diets conducted that nearly 100% of people of dieters suffered almost complete relapse after three to five years. In other words, dieters almost always return to their pre-diet weight or to even higher weight sometimes. So if you need to lose weight, forget about fad diets and focus instead on changing your lifestyle. Honestly, ladies, <laughs> and I shared this with you yesterday, there, we're only on day three and there has been literally so many things that I have said and then like the next day we read it and the book said it and then I'll say something else and then the next day the book goes and says it. I'm like, this book, is so completely aligned <laughs> with how I view health, with fully encompassing the mind, body, spirit aspects of health. And it's just really funny, like almost word for word on day three so far, it's happened almost every day. Something that I have said, either said to you in the community or said in one of my coaching programs, something that I have said, the book ends up saying, it's just so awesome. And this is why I created the daily five. It is a lifestyle guideline. This is why I don't promote any fads or gimmicks or anything like that. I promote a healthy lifestyle. This is why the fit plus faith lifestyle membership <laughs> is in the works right now and is going to be launching next month. And I'll tell you more about that later. Sorry, little side note, but it's just awesome. 
because it's just exactly in alignment with how we need to be approaching our health as making lifestyle changes and not trying to do quick fixes that we ultimately, we see the science, we see the statistics. It's going to make, it's not, the pr probability of success over long term is low. Short term, yes. Short term, we can't deny. But it's the long term that it's not working. So we need to be changing and having that mental switch in our mind for a lifestyle. Monique, good morning. Coming in from Vancouver, BC. I love it. Welcome, Monique. Jordan says, this book is, is um, ready our minds. Or do you mean reading our minds? I said... I said I get too many calories from honey in my tea and now this. That's so funny. Hey, Tina, good morning. Tina, are you coming in from San Diego? I'm trying to remember. And so awesome. Hey, sister. My sister is also joining us. What is up, girl? Uh, my sister Rachel coming in from New Mexico. I love that we have ladies from all over the place. And so go ahead, and those of you that are still joining, please feel free to continue to uh, tag, share, and invite other ladies to join us this morning. <laughs> you like my bun this morning? Can you guys see it? Oh my gosh, this is when I want to be extra super lazy, and uh, my hair is dirty, and I just need to pull it up, and somehow it came into a cute bun, so thank you for that. <laughs> Tina's coming in from Sacramento. Okay, awesome. So I love it. So it says we must focus instead on a lifestyle not on fad diets. So 100% yes. Your current weight is the result of the number of calories that you have consumed during your lifestyle versus the number of calories that you have burned. It seriously can be as simple as that sometimes. We look at where we currently are and it just shows us how, and, and not all calories are the same, but it shows us in general how many calories we have been consuming and certain calories are gonna react poorly in our body versus how much exercise we are doing in order to balance it out or to burn off the calories. If you want to lose more weight, then you must burn more calories or take in fewer calories. It can be as simple as that. I've shared with you guys in the past, however, though, that I feel that you cannot outrun a bad diet. So we do need to pay attention to where the calories are coming from because we can't just run everything off and eat like crap and be healthy. That's not going to work. But understanding where your calories are coming from and how different calories are affecting your body, then, and that not all calories are created equal in our body and certain calories increase the amount of fat that our body will produce, AKA a lot of sugar related calories. But in the end, we can look in a more simplistic view and say, well, where do I need to make a change? I need to adjust where my calories are coming from and how many I'm consuming without starving myself and going into a crazy headspace, right? We don't want to get consumed with counting calories, but we need to understand where they're coming from versus am I exercising and being physically active and helping my body work better and more efficiently and burn more calories for me. And that will happen more with strength training over cardio. Tina, 80% diet, 20% fitness. Exactly. Yes. Uh-huh. Having much heavier weight on, on your food, paying attention to your food versus your exercise. Awesome. Many of us are remarkably ill-informed and amazingly apathetic about the foods we eat. We feast on high fat, fast foods. We swoon over sweets. We order up and promptly pack away prodigious portions. The result is a society in which too many of us become the human equivalents of the portions that we purchase, which is oversized. Yikes but we need to look at the reality of that. We need to look at the reality of that. Hey, Jaylene, she says, let yourself live a little without guilt. Yes, absolutely. Knowing that you are making full awareness of the choices that you're making and that you're taking responsibility for them. I'm going to plan that when I go to this thing that I'm going to indulge a little more than normal. You know, I'm going to intentionally know that that is my plan rather than just getting blindsided and then throwing off your whole plan because you weren't planning on it and then you feel guilty about it and then it turns into a crazy binge. Jordan says, I found the easiest when you log your food, uh-huh, like on your Fitbit, and then you can see how much you're eating versus burning and you can reach your desired deficit. Yeah, 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. So many good tools to help you do that. Fitbit, MyFitnessPal, uh, Lose It, all these different apps that can help you understand that balance a little bit more as well. Hey Hope, good morning, great to see you here. Hope also coming in from New Mexico, awesome. So it says again, the result is a society in which too many of us become the human equivalents of the portions we purchase, which is oversized. A healthier strategy, of course, is to pay more attention to the nutritional property of the food and less attention to their taste. Our taste buds can throw us off sometimes because things do taste so good. So sometimes all we begin to want is the craving of the taste of certain things. And that can be a very strong piece to sway us, right? But the good news is, is that your taste buds will begin to change as your food changes and your taste buds will begin to crave what you feed it. So if we begin to feed it less processed, sugary, high fat food, and we begin feeding it really healthy, nutritionally dense, healthy, whole food, over time, your taste buds will change and pretty soon that carrot tastes so much more amazing than it ever did. That apple tastes so much sweeter than it ever did because your taste buds literally change. Uh, hey, Presley, good morning. She says, my, di my dinosaur laptop finally worked. Oh, you're Jordan's sister. <laughs> well, welcome, Presley. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that your uh, laptop is working for you to join us. I love it. But for those of us that have become accustomed to large quantities of full flavored, high calorie foods, old memories die hard. Absolutely. Should we count every calorie that we ingest from now until the day that God calls us home? Probably not. When we focus too intently upon weight reduction, we may, wait, we may make weight loss even harder to achieve. Instead, we should eliminate from our diets the foods that are obviously bad for us, and we should eat more of the foods that are obviously good for us. And of course, we should eat sensible amounts, not prodigious portions. How hard is it for us to know the nutritional properties of the food we eat? Not very hard. In the grocery store, almost every food item is clearly marked. In fast food restaurants, the fat and calorie contents are typically posted on the wall. I know that in California, it is a law, it is required that every food item has its calorie count next to it. I don't know if that's nationwide or not, but it's a really big eye opener for sure when you see, oh, I'm gonna have that many calories when I pick that portion you know, at the restaurant or at Starbucks or whatever. As informed adults, we have access to all the information that we need to make healthy choices. Now it's up to each of us to make wise dietary choices or not. Those choices are ours. And by the way, we also are the consequences. I love how plain that is. The choices are ours. And so by the way, are the consequences, which one do we want? One of the things I love to do when I'm talking with someone or maybe I'm talking with a new potential client or working with a client is we, we outline the two, like where am I gonna be in three to five years from now if I continue the way that I'm going, if I continue the habits that I have, the patterns that I'm in, what is my outcome going to look like in three to five years from now and how is that going to affect my life and my family and all this. Now, if I make the changes that I want to make, that I know will serve me and will help me, if I make those changes, then what is my life gonna look like in three to five years from now? And we outline those two scenarios because they're both exactly real and they're both exactly possible, but it is our daily choices that is gonna send us towards one path or towards the other path. It's our daily choices added up little by little, day by day, that will literally take you towards one result or the other. Which one do you want? Ultimately, that's it. Tina says, yes, I work at the Cheesecake Factory and seeing the calories is crazy, right, Tina? Oh my gosh, Cheesecake Factory. You're like, oh, let me go get this, you know, delicious looking dinner. Oh, the whole dinner is 2,500 calories. That's more than my calories I should have for a whole day in this one meal. Are you serious? <laughs> like it's mind blowing. It's amazing. Jordan says, I struggle with this because I want to count everything right down to the vitamin gummies. No, but I think it's, um, but I think it's safe to say that that isn't all necessary and really just stresses me out. Of course it is. Yeah, it totally makes it harder. You're absolutely right. I'd rather just look at my food 
and its portions and know it has good nutritional value and feel good about it. Yes, that is a much healthier mentality to have for it as well. Presley says, I am new to this, but if you knew the calculations in nutrition and then read food labels and the calorie count is always more than what the calories from um, FC and P never add up. Oh, from fat, carbs, and protein never add up. Yeah, there's a lot of hidden things, isn't there, right? They're, they're able to have a lot of leeway in the formulation of their nutritional labels. And so it's deceiving for sure. Yeah. Yeah, Tina, Cheesecake Factory does go to the extremes for sure. So here we go. First Corinthians 10 31. This is an awesome verse. It says, therefore, whether you eat or you drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Type that below. First Corinthians 10 31. First Corinthians 10 31. This could be a memorization verse for you today. I love it. It's easy. It's simple. And it's the truth. 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So simple, so simple. That is our guidebook. Monique says, I made a post turkey soup yesterday and it was basically all whole. I never added the pasta and the recipe called for, but instead cauliflower, love it. I never counted the calories, but I knew it was turkey bones Tomatoes, celery, carrot, zucchini, mushroom, broccoli. Yum! It was delicious and satisfying. Just things God created in a pot. I love that. That's why I love soups. Counting calories till Christ calls me home will drive me nuts. <laughs> yes, it will. We don't need it. We just need to have an understanding of it. And the best understanding is when you realize I can have so many more in volume of vegetables. I can have so much more and the calories are really small. So where would I wanna go? Have something that has super high calories where I can only eat a little, or have something that has low calories where I can eat a lot and feel really good and feel satisfied. That's what we want, right? More vegetables, more vegetables. So good. Oh, Tina said that women go to the extremes. I see, not just Cheesecake Factory. Women go to the extremes. We count calories like crazy or not at all. It's true. We need to find kind of a healthy balance just to have a proper understanding of calories, but not to be driven by calories. That would be improper. Uh, that's going to be unhealthy mindset. We want to detach from it, but have a healthy understanding of it. Paige says, how do I get the book? I'm visual than auditory for learning. Yeah, no worries, girl. I posted the book already in the thread. So if you scroll back um, through the comments, you'll see that I already posted the link to the book. So there we go. Awesome, awesome. So that is our verse, our memory verse for today, 1 Corinthians 10, 31. All right, I would love for you guys to make that your intention to memorize that verse today and allow it to sink into your heart. That is how we let God's word be hidden in our hearts is through memorization. And it's such a good one. So now let's talk about some of these, um, some famous quotes here about eating sensibly. These are some quotes for eating sensibly. John Maxwell, you guys know John Maxwell? He's pretty famous. Says the key to healthy eating is moderation and managing what you eat every day. There we go. Ben Franklin says eat to live, not live to eat. We got to really catch ourselves on that one. I've been definitely um, guilty of living to eat, not eating to live. Uh, let's see, Dr. Ben Lerner says, the permanent pleasure associated with eating well, such as better sleep, higher energy, more restful sleep, I'm sorry, better health, higher energy, more restful sleep, looking your best, improved work performance, and a happier frame of mind, usually outweighs the temporary pleasure of the taste. Yes, it does, all those benefits all those benefits to eating healthy. One of the ladies that is in our, um, our Facebook group, Ashley, she has gone on an incredible health journey of completely diving into whole foods and uh, making some major lifestyle changes. And uh, she was saying just the other day that it's been four, I believe she said four weeks or four months, I'll have to go back and check, but consistently eating healthy whole foods for that time and now, 
a lot of the aches and pains of her body are going away. Her body is changing and adapting, but we have to be consistent. But amazing things can happen that won't require medication or amazing things can happen when you're suffering maybe with some sort of, um, of a condition or even autoimmune different diseases can drastically be affected by how we're eating. So I love that. There's so many other benefits to eating healthy, rather that outweighs the temporary pleasure of the taste. Another quote from John Maxwell says, you can look at your calorie count in the same way you might look at a bank account. Every mouthful of food is a deposit and every activity that requires energy is a withdrawal. If we deposit more than we withdraw, our surplus grows larger and larger, AKA our body can grow larger and larger. So that's one way to look at it too. And then St. Bonaventure says, food ought to be a refreshment to the body and not a burden. Wow. Food ought to be a refreshment to the body and not a burden. Yes, Tina. Yes, we can. Isn't that amazing? God has given us amazing bodies and they respond amazingly well to the foods that he created for us to eat and live and be nourished by. It can be as simple as that. So yes, absolutely. Our food can help to heal our bodies. It's amazing. All right, so here we go. We're wrapping it up for our three tips for the day. Our food tip, our fitness tip, and our daily focus. Yes, exactly, Monique. That's another great verse. All things are permissible, but not all things are beneficial. All right, I don't know the scripture for that verse, but we'll have to look that one up. But that's another verse from the Bible. All things are permissible. No one's gonna stop you, but not all things are beneficial. It's the truth. Proverbs speaking the truth. We have the Holy Spirit within us. So we wear the fruit of temperance and balance, self-control, not gluttony. Amen, Monique. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. So our food tip today is crash diets always crash. There we go. Don't fall for extreme diets. Don't try to starve yourself and fall into the yo-yo diet trap. Instead, adopt healthy habits that you can live with for the rest of your life. That's what we want. Paige says, I am, I'm, Presley says, I'm a nurse. I think with today's society, the nutritional needs to be an absolute class in schools. Oh, I agree with you. Particularly high school, absolutely. The first year of college, 70% of students gain at least 15 pounds because primarily monetary reasons. However, I believe that if our youth were educated about the connection between food and physiology, we could make a dent in our obesity that our children have been plagued with. Yes, oh my gosh, I know. I remember not really getting a really good nutrition class until I was in college. And then again, when I was in my doctorate program, that's when I finally understood nutrition at a deeper level. I'm thinking, how have I never been taught this before? When I look back at how I had been eating all through high school, I'm like, are you for real? That was what? <laughs> and then I get upset too that I'm like, how is society allowing this? And how is our government allowing this? And so then that just goes into a whole different set of frustrations. But I agree with you wholeheartedly. Jordan says, I am currently working with my doctor to treat my bipolar disorder strictly through food and diet and sleep. That is amazing. Oh, Jordan, that's amazing. That's so wonderful. So our food tip was crash diets always crash. We don't want to do that. We want to develop a lifestyle. And then um, a fitness tip says, slow down, take a deep breath and talk to God. Are you making, as you make health related choices throughout the day, slow down and ask yourself this question. Is this how God wants me to take care of my body? It could be as simple as that. Is this like asking God, God, is this how you want me to care for my body? And, and what I am, what I'm doing, is that honoring to you? I have, um, the gardeners are outside with a air blower thing. So I, sorry, sorry if that gets a little loud. So slow down and ask yourself that question. Is this how God wants me to take care of my body? God, are you being honored by the way I'm caring for my body right now, by how I'm moving or lack of moving, by what I'm eating or not eating? Is that caring to my body? Yeah. <laughs> Presley says, I really need the book. Yep, we'll get the, uh, you, once we're done, you can scroll back through the comments and then get the link there. So good. 
So today's focus, yesterday's focus we talked about was procrastination. And if you missed yesterday's, then when this is done, just go right over. There's a whole playlist that I created just with the videos for our devotion as we work our way through. Excuse me. So go to day two and catch that one on procrastination. It was so good. But today's focus says, think about the long-term benefits of eating sensibly and think about the long-term costs of poor food choices. Again, the book just confirmed what I said to you earlier. <laughs> and I have to be honest, I hadn't read that part yet. I have been saying things and then later on we'll read it in the book or the next day we'll read it in the book. I'm like, this book, this book and me are just in sync. Thank you, God. And so, uh, so this is what we talked about before. We have those two options that we're moving towards and our daily choices are making us move from one to the other. Our daily choices are making us move from one to the other. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, Presley, but here we go. We have our food tip, our fitness tip, and then today's focus. That's just kind of how, um, how it lines it out in the book for us like that, since you are more visual. And this is what the book looks like, faith, fitness, and food, okay? All right, so there we go, ladies. So what is, based on your choices today, which path are you going down? Which path are you going down? You're going down the one in five years from now that's gonna seem super awesome and feel really good, or you're going down the one that's gonna make you feel even more frustrated and lost, and who knows what condition your body will be in by then too. We have one or the other, and our daily choices are what is going to drastically affect which path we're going down. So that is our focus for today. All right, yes, Tina, Faith, Fitness, and Food. That is our book from Day Spring Publishing. It doesn't have a particular author, it's just from the publishing company, uh, but I think they've done a wonderful job. So join me again tomorrow for day four. This is gonna be going on at 8 a.m. Pacific time on the Fit Plus Faith Facebook page. So thank you, join me again as we move forward. And just wanted to let you guys know, especially to those of you that are new, we have something really exciting that I alluded to before called our Fit Plus Faith Lifestyle Membership. We've been talking in the book this morning specifically about lifestyle that it is our lifestyle, it is not crash and fad diets, it's our lifestyle. And so this is what I'm in the, in the middle of creating for you that should be launching next month. And it is called the Fit Plus Faith Lifestyle Membership. It is going to be resources and tangible things for you to move forward in your mind, body, and spirit, as well as so many other benefits. And so I'll post that link for you down below as well. So, uh, and we're in the pre-launch phase right now, which is awesome, which means you can get in on the ground floor for the best uh, price as well for that monthly membership coming up. So pre-launch for the membership. So check that out there for those of you that are interested in joining us in that so that we can be joining hands together and intentionally moving forward, creating that lifestyle of healthy mind, body, and spirit. All right. Presley says, oh, I missed yesterday's. I procrastinated at the gym. However, my membership was expired. I went to the gym and renewed it last night. Good. But my dad needed some help and asked me to clean his house. Got it. So I took that as an opportunity to work out. <laughs> I love it. You put on your iPod and jammed out with some cardio cleaning the house. There you go exercising can come in many different forms. So that's awesome that that still worked out for you. <laughs> well, all right, ladies, I love you. I hope that this was really wonderful for you this morning. Let's go ahead and pray and we will wrap it up. Presley says, I have a lot of friends who would love this. Is there something for men? You know, when it's on our public page here, anyone is able to join us, even men, but the ministry itself and the Facebook group, Healthy Christian Women Facebook group, are specifically for women. So I do tailor the majority of my ministry towards women, but um, on these public videos that we do, it is possible for men to join us if they wanted to. All right, Jordan says, love you ladies. Yes, absolutely, have a blessed day, off to run. No procrastination, that's awesome. So let's go ahead and pray. Thank you God so much for this morning. Thank you for new friends. Thank you for uh, just all these women connecting from all over the country right now. It's so beautiful to see what you are doing. Thank you for their open hearts uh, for sharing and uh, just for everything that we're learning in this book that it's just speaking right to our hearts that we are to look at our healthy choices day by day as ways to honor you and that we can literally just slow down and just ask you, God, is this honoring you with how I'm caring for my body today? And it can be as simple as that. Help us to obey 
when you tell us what to do, when you give us that prompting, help us to continue to be turning to you for our choices and honoring you with our choices. That is our ultimate desire, God, is to honor you with our body, with this temple that you've given us, and that uh, we have so much control over how it can perform and function. And we just thank you for that. We ask that you continue to guide us and direct us and be with us during these devotions. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Sounds good. Uh, Presley says, but do you know of one for men? I don't actually. That's a really good question. I don't know of one that is specifically men only. So that's a great question. Um, but I am sorry that I don't. We'll have to see if maybe God brings something across my path, then I will definitely let you know. Monique says, thanks so much. I needed this today. I will join tomorrow as well and get the book. Awesome, Monique. Sounds so good. We'd love to have you join us again. So that's wonderful. Well, all right, ladies, have a wonderful rest of your day. Happy Wednesday inside the Facebook group, the Healthy Christian Women Facebook group. It is Water Wednesday, so I'll be putting that post up in the group. And our goal today is to be aiming towards 100 ounces of water for the day. So I'll put that up in the group, and then you can be tracking your progress throughout the day. So cheers to everyone on Water Wednesday. And uh, so, so great to meet so many of you that are new, uh, both new to our group and just new to joining us here. Uh, great to meet you, Presley, absolutely. And uh, look forward to seeing you guys again tomorrow morning, okay? Bye everybody, this again is Dr. Melody with Fit Plus Faith. I will see you later.